Trump's body man turned co-defendant Walt Nada has finally appeared in court for his arraignment today after quite a delay. It's nearly a month after the former president was indicted in the classified documents probe. The former Navy vet from Guam is facing the very real possibility of years behind bars now for allegedly helping hide government secrets and lying to investigators. All of this, of course, is raising the question of what is going to happen to Nada going forward, what his legal strategy will look like. In the past, we have seen people who were loyal to the former president flip before. And tonight, my first guest is Trump's former attorney, Michael Cohen. Michael, thank you for being here. Of course, you're the author of Revenge. You host the Political Beatdown, a mea culpa podcast, we should note. Uh, first, before we get to Walt Nada, on this new reporting, on that meeting that happened in the Oval Office, what does it say to you that it's of significant interest to Jack Smith and his team in what we think is the closing days of this investigation? Well, I don't know as they're talking about the chaos. Donald Trump lives in chaos every single day of his life. It's why he's referred to as Captain Chaos. So why it is that they're now looking at it, um, it's possibly just more uh, for superseding indictments. And I think it probably affects others more than Donald Trump. Yeah, they're looking at those others who are there. On Walt Nada, he finally was arraigned today. There was quite a delay as he was trying to get a, a Florida-based attorney to go in there with him. He pleaded not guilty. You think that's the wrong decision? No, I think he uh, believes that by being the Trumpiest Trumper, that Donald will protect him. Oh, so the answer would be yes. I think it's a bad decision on his part. Um, again, being the Trumpiest Trumper, he thinks Donald will protect him and not throw him under the bus. Well, the benefit for someone like Walt Nada is the fact that he has the example of Michael Cohen to look at. He is the example of Rudy Giuliani to look at. He has the example of half a dozen other people, including people like Stuart Rhodes, who got an 18-year sentence. What happened to Donald taking care of them? What happened to Donald paying their legal fees? In fact, tomorrow, I'm back in court for pretrial conference on legal fees where I'm suing Donald uh, in order to recover. That's after four and a half years. You're suing the Trump Organization for those legal fees. You think Walt Nada should learn from your example, do you mean? I think he probably should. I mean, you know, history repeats itself. And in this specific case, one thing that we know for certain is that Donald does not pay legal fees. Donald doesn't pay fees at all. The other side of that is that he is paying his legal fees right now from the super PAC, we should note, which is also paying Trump's legal fees. You know, Walt Nauta worked for him in the West Wing. He took him down to Florida with him. He, he does seem to have this sense of loyalty to Trump. I mean, is there any incentive for him to flip in that sense? It's not really flipping. It's providing testimony, whether he, he's going to do it voluntarily or he's going to get subpoenaed. It's one or the other. You're not going to not be responsive when government wants the information from you. And so if there's something that Walt can do right now that would benefit him, then my belief is that he should probably consider it. What leads someone? I mean, you were in this position. I mean, Trump once tweeted, uh, I remember this, Michael is a businessman for his own account lawyer who I've always liked and respected. He said most people will flip if the government lets them out of trouble. Sorry, I don't see Michael doing that. Of course, the Michael he is referring to there is you, and you ultimately did flip. What leads someone uh, to do that? Well, there came a point in time where I said my loyalty, my first loyalty, has to be to my wife, my daughter, my son, and my country. And that was when I made the decision. I was actually speaking to George Stephanopoulos at the time. And there just came a point in time that I said, enough is enough. While I understand that right now Trump or the PAC is paying for Walt Nada's legal fees, let's not forget he did the same thing with me. But there's a pattern to what he does. He will pay a little bit, fall behind, pay a little more, fall bigger behind. And that way, which is, again, what this case that I have um, going to trial at the end of this month is all about, what will ultimately happen is he will leave Walt Nada the same way he left me, the same way he left Giuliani, Stuart Rhodes, and dozens of other people. One thing that's different about Nada is he is a co-defendant of Trump's. And, you know, they've been told not to discuss the case as a list of other witnesses. But there's been no secret of how closely they've continued to work together. I mean, you've seen Walt Nada at rallies that Trump has done. They were ordering cheesesteaks together in Philadelphia at Pat's recently. 
<laughs> Does it strike you that, that Trump hasn't tried to keep some distance from him? No. No, because Donald Trump doesn't believe that the rules apply to him. They apply to you. They apply to me. They apply to everybody else, but they don't apply to him. If you tell him not to do something, being the petulant child that he is, he will then go ahead and do it simply to be spiteful. One thing you, you did say, you talked about how Trump, with your legal fees and how they paid some and got it behind. Do you think Trump has learned his lesson, though, with this, given the consequences of, you know, your testimony eventually leading to him being the first ever president indicted? Yeah, twice. Um, I actually think he has learned uh, the lesson. And I think it's to one of the reasons close? to keep them close. You know, he made a big mistake. Uh, I think he knows that he made that big mistake, and he's not going to make it a second time, at least not with Walt. Michael Cohen, thanks for joining us Good tonight. to see you. I'm joined now tonight by former U.S. attorney for the Southern District of Florida, where the Trump's documents case is expected to be heard, Marcos Jimenez, as well as former federal prosecutor Jennifer Rogers. Thank you both for being here tonight, Marcos. You know, we spent a lot of time together when Trump was himself being arraigned in Florida Nada himself has struggled to find an attorney in Florida. He did today with this woman, Sasha Dedan, I believe is how you pronounce her last name. How does she fit into this picture in the, the sense of how well-known she is in that, in, that, in that circuit down there? Well, she is not well-known. Uh, in fact, if you uh, look at the docket today in the case, you will see that uh, the magistrate judge had to enter an order providing expedited a procedure for her to obtain uh, permission to file documents electronically. All attorneys in the Southern District of Florida must register for electronic filing, and she was not. So that indicates to me that she did she does not have substantial federal criminal experience. I believe that her experience has primarily been in the state court criminal process uh, as a federal public defender in the state system. And, uh, of course, we know that she ran for office as a Republican politician. Yeah, and, of course, we know he has another attorney, that is Stan Woodward, who has been with him for most of this. She's just the legal-based counsel in Florida. Jennifer, we are told that Trump and Nada both believe uh, right now that taking these cases to trial is the right strategy for them. They are hopeful they'll, get, uh, they'll be acquitted by a jury. Do you see that as the best strategy at this point, based on what you've read in that indictment? Well, uh, I don't know that it's the best strategy for Walt Nada because he likely has the option of cooperating against Trump, uh, becoming a cooperating witness, pleading guilty, and getting a more lenient sentence at the end of the day. For Trump himself, I find it impossible to believe that he would plead guilty himself. So uh, that leaves trial really as his only option. And I think he's probably hoping that some of his most uh, most, uh, you know, burdened supporters will uh, be on that jury and refuse to convict him. So I think that's his play. And so far, we haven't seen this divergence where Walt Nada, uh, you know, takes his own interest as presidential. And uh, maybe he will, maybe he won't. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, no indication of that yet. And Marcus, yesterday we got an unsealed additional portions of the search warrant that was used for that search that happened in Mar-a-Lago in, in August. And it says essentially that they saw Walt Nada on surveillance footage moving more boxes out of the storage room than were ultimately brought back. If you're not Walt Nada, what is your defense for something like that? Well, I think Walt Nada's defense is going to be that uh, he did not know what the boxes contained, that he did not know anything about classified information. Uh, I think that's going to be difficult because I think the indictment says at one point that he walked into the room and saw that there was a classified document that had spilled out into the floor. And his, his bigger problem is that uh, the government alleges in the indictment that he lied to the FBI agents when they interviewed him about moving those boxes. Uh, that's a difficult, uh, sometimes very difficult charge to overcome because you have an FBI agent on the stand who's very credible saying, uh, we know this fact to be true, and he told us the opposite when we interviewed him, and that is a separate federal offense. That, that by itself, um, if you're convicted for that, results in a felony conviction. Uh, I think Walt Nada's hope here is that somehow the jury will have compassion on him because he simply you know, was a worker for Donald Trump. And maybe his ultimate hope is that if Donald Trump is reelected, that he'll be pardoned if he's convicted. And there's nothing stopping for Donald Trump if he's reelected 
um, I meant to say, if he's reelected, uh, President Trump in his second term could easily pardon Mr. Yeah. Nada if he's convicted. 